Hello Ottawa, I'm Zaida Yakova with Metro City Property Group and today I'm with one of the best mortgage brokers in Ottawa, Vanessa Wilson. I'm with Referral Mortgages. Thank you for joining us today, Vanessa. Welcome. Today we wanted to answer some of the most frequently asked questions we get from first-time home buyers and repeat buyers and sometimes even sellers. So we'll get right into it, Vanessa. What is the difference between working with a mortgage broker or working with the bank? That's a great question, Sierra. A question I get myself as well uh, daily. So when you work with a broker, we have access to a number of different lenders and options for you. When you go to the bank, you're limited to what their products are and their guidelines. So when you come to work with a broker, we can take all the uh, different scenarios from you know one lender to the next for your unique situation and help give you the best product for your needs. That's amazing. So the next question we always get, what does it cost to work with you versus working with a bank? That's also a great question. <laughs> so our services are free. So. Um, we love that word. <laughs> Say it again. Free. Free to work with a mortgage broker. So they're not paying you anything. No, we are compensated by the lender when you are placed in a mortgage and the uh, compensation is unique throughout the industry. So whether we place you, you know, with a bank or uh, an alternative lender, the, um, the finder's fee is comparable between all of them. Perfect. That's wonderful. Now, we do want to ask about pre-approvals. So we've met you now. We know it's so important to have your mortgage pre-approval before you buy a home. Now for all the first time home buyers or people that are saving to buy their home that are wondering, you know, what a pre-approval is, essentially you're going to be meeting with Vanessa, the mortgage broker, to identify your budget. What can you afford? So we know it's important because we don't want to be going out there and looking at homes and you know, your time is precious. We want to make sure that we're only looking at exactly what you can afford um, so that when you do place an offer on a property that you like, the seller knows that you've done your research, homework, and you've prepared to buy that home. So Vanessa, what does the pre-approval process look like for so, buyers? Excellent. You always want to have that plan uh, and really had the opportunity to look at your situation or your family's financial situation before making such a big decision. So it's really best to start with the pre-approval process, uh, meet with somebody like myself who's going to work with you, be there and guide you throughout the process uh, and really take a good look at your financial situation. So the pre-approval process, you're going to go through an application process and provide supporting documentation. That is really key and important because I've had clients come to me where they've got, you know, a pre-qualification, yes. which is really not the light. same thing. No, it's a high level look at what you can afford based on your income. There's no fully underwritten review of your documentation. You really want somebody to look at, you know, your employment status, look at your documents, your down payment funds, your closing costs to make sure that your pre-approval has validity. If that's so important to like, kind of elaborate on that a little bit because we do have buyers that come and say, oh, I'm approved, I'm, I'm, I'm good, I, I went to the bank. But they haven't actually sat down with a broker to look at their income. Is there something in collections that you forgot about from years ago? Do you have the proper down payment? Will there be other people on that mortgage? Are you full, full, full time employed? Do you have a bonus? Do you, are you self employed? So all these things are so important because we've had situations where buyers have told us they're pre approved without an official pre approval letter, which we'll talk about later. And when it comes time to actually purchase that property and you end up looking at everything and go, whoa, 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 pump the brakes here. We've, we've over, we've, we've overspent. So it's so important to, to come and see you and do all that. It is, and actually you touched on a great point, Zaira. Not only will we look at the documents for you, but what it's also really important is having you look at your credit. Looking, having somebody review your credit bureau for you, because believe me, I've had situations in very recent ones where there have been late payments reporting on someone's credit bureau for an extended period of time, which was actually incorrect. So what we would do in that case is open an Equifax investigation and have that corrected and provide evidence that you know the bill was wow. paid and we would have it all corrected. I recently just did that and the person's credit bureau went from uh, you know 640 to over 700 just with that one correction. And sometimes people will have something on their bureau from an old cell phone bill that they completely forgot about 
and it's just it could be like five dollars or ten dollars but they're just automated where they go to Equifax or TransUnion and it hits their bureau the other thing speaking of credit we've noticed that when they're working with you you pull their credit once but if you're going bank to bank to bank to get an application done they're pulling your credit every time and what happens to credit every time it's pulled there is uh it does affect your credit bureau so when you do come with to a broker we will pull your credit once and it's good for all of our lenders for an extended period of time so then if we do need find a you know something on the credit bureau and we have it corrected and we can repull your credit and it's not going to affect your score so that's another advantage of you coming to work with a broker and us doing that legwork for you so we do you know we do have access to banks. So if you do absolutely want to work with the bank, no problem at all. I can actually, you know, place you with the bank lender. And most of the time we are getting preferred rates, uh, discretionary rates for us because they know we have so many different options. The so they'll be more competitive to have you bring their buyer to them. Yes. That's good to know. Another point, important point is when you are working with a broker, I'm going to reprice your rate up till three days before your closing date. Something people don't know. So I had clients, you know, very recently, I, in January, the bond rates came down. I repriced it multiple times before their closing. To get them the best possible lowest rate. rate. For sure. So that's a really good point because say I'm, I'm banking with the same bank for a very long time. And I say, you know, Vanessa, I really want to stay with that, that bank because you do work with some of the big banks. We do, yeah. You can, which is what happened with one of our buyers recently. They were with one big bank that I love and they really wanted to stay with that bank. And you know what? That's where you were able to put their mortgage for them with all the, the rates and everything. Their mortgage is now with their bank. They wanted to keep it all together. But working with you and having access to you and the communication, your availability, your emails, your follow-up, they were able to get that full service and still keep their business with their, their bank of choice. Right, great point. So that client service is really important uh, to me, uh, having that communication, making sure that everybody involved is on the same page. So uh, you know, I'm keeping the realtor informed, I'm keeping the lawyer informed. The financing is the, a huge component in the buying process. So you really wanna make sure you're working with someone who's gonna have that communication, who's gonna guide you, who's also gonna provide you the aftercare after closing. Yeah. So I will stay in touch with my clients throughout the mortgage term and beyond. If you know two or three years down the road, rates come down and I can save them money, I'm gonna rerun all their numbers and their scenarios and say, hey, Saira, you know what? Rates are here now. Let's call and see what it would cost you to break that mortgage and bring it to a different lender and save you thousands a year. In the long run, that's fantastic. So that's just that kind of initiative and being proactive, that's not really something that you, you see everywhere. So it, it really is, it does make a big difference for our clients. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit about rates. We talked about rates and you do run the rates before the closing day to make sure that they're getting the absolute best rate. So if I'm getting my keys to my house tomorrow and that mortgage is being activated, but rates dropped yesterday, you'd still do that. But we want to talk about rate holds. People do ask me, they go through the application process and they say, well, what if rates keep going up? So you can hold them, but what if rates go down? Can they get the next best rate? How does that work? Absolutely. So part of the pre-approval process is I will automatically request a rate interest rate hold for 120 days for all of my clients and then base their pre-approval on that rate. So with rate holds, because you're not actually asking for the funds at that time, you're just asking for a guarantee, there's usually a bit of a premium on them. Most of the time I can get people a lower rate when they have an accepted offer. So think of that interest rate hold as like your worst case scenario in a time of rising rates. You should be able to have that rate at minimum. Most of my clients right now, we are get, getting lower uh, rates for them when they have the accepted offer because the lender knows like, okay, there's an offer. You know you're gonna need the funds now. We can get that lower rate for you for sure. So you can guarantee a great rate, but if it does go lower, you can still go ahead and change it for them before the, the, Absolutely. they get the keys to their new home. That's fantastic. It may not even be the same lender that we got the rate hold with. We would reshop the okay. whole file to see who has the best rate in terms, right? Okay. The other thing to keep in mind with rates, rates are, you know, it really depends on your situation. There's different rates for even different credit scores. So it's, there's also so many different products out there. Sometimes we do see where somebody 
found this like extremely low rate, but they don't realize that it's such a limiting product. It, it's, there's a sales only clause uh, for it. So you don't want to get stuck into something that you can't get out of two years down the road. So it's really important that you work, you're working with somebody who can help you. I will always um, you know, help people review different commitments from other institutions as well. So they know, hey, are we, ex are we comparing apples to apples here? Yeah. Or is that you know, a no frills, low basic product with a sales only clause where two years down the road, if you wanna move uh, or refinance to you know, renovate a kitchen or a bathroom, you know, you're unfortunately handcuffed to that sales only clause. And that's the thing about working with your, you at the mortgage broker is it's not just about getting the best rate. A lot of first time home buyers or even homeowners don't really look at the mortgage terms because you may be getting that rate, but what are the conditions associated with that, with that rate and that mortgage product? So that's, I think what you were, meant when you said, you know, the, the contract details, you know, I've seen people in those situations where they're stuck with that for a, a long time, or there's a huge penalty if they need to sell their home or, or move. And so you want to make sure that you understand the rate, of course, but also sitting down with Vanessa, you're going to really uh, get a good idea of what the terms are, that you're not locked into some some crazy contract, which we, none of us like. So Right. Yeah. The, the prepayment privileges are big. Portability, transferability, those are all things that you want to have. I have yet to put somebody in a very restricted product. I would always go with something that has those privileges. Okay, perfect. One of the most common questions we get from buyers is how much of a down payment do I need to get a pre-approval? Great question, Zira. So 5% up to 500,000. The amount over 500,000 is 10%. And then over a million is always 20%. And what happens if you don't have that 20%? So if you don't have 20%, you can still get a mortgage, not to worry. The automatic default insurance premium would be added to the mortgage. Uh, the benefit of that though is that you do get lower rates because uh, your mortgage is being backed by a third party. Perfect. Now, when it comes to that pre-approval um, down payment, can it be a gift? Excellent question, Zaira. Yes, absolutely. Down payments can be gifted by immediate family members. Okay. What we would do at the time of your accepted offer is have the gifter sign a letter and transfer you the funds. Perfect. And one thing that we do love that is offered to first-time home buyers are incentives to help them get into their dream home. What are those uh, first-time home buyer incentives? Good question, Zaira. There are three main incentives that I encourage buyers to take advantage of. The first one is the home buyer's plan. So using up to 35,000 per borrower of the RRSPs towards the purchase of the home. So if they have an RRSP that they've been saving up and they can take out up to 35,000 per borrower. Per borrower. And when you say there's no penalty, that means that they don't have to pay tax on that amount correct because they took it out for their first home exactly. we do know that there are some details to understand about that so when they come and see you you kind of help them understand that when you know that does have to be paid back over a period of time that's right and uh, the money that they take out for that first time home purchase has to have been in the rsp for 90, 90 days, days history yes. so these are really important details to keep in mind and we mentioned the 90 days about down payment gifts and RRSP withdrawals because the sooner you start talking to a mortgage broker like Vanessa about your home purchase, the sooner you can buy your home. Sometimes people come and see you when they've got their down payment, they've got their great credit, right. but we say, whoa, whoa, we're not ready to buy because that money hasn't been in the account for 90 days. So it's never too early to come and meet us and understand the path in front of you and just be better prepared when the time comes. That's right. So Zira, about the 90 days is what we do. Part of our pre-approval process is sourcing the deposit. So if we can source the, you know, the origination of that deposit into the RSP, it's no problem. We can definitely help you if it came from your own resources. Okay, so when we say deposit, we're talking about when you make the purchase, your offer gets accepted, you give the seller a deposit that they hold, that deposit can, also be coming out of that RRSP money. That's sure if you can access it that quickly. So that's okay. something that's always the advice I give people, you know, we have a look at those documentation. I will guide you to say like, you know, call your institution. 
ask them how long it's going to take for you to access that money. So, you know, we go through all that in the pre-approval process, so that's why it's never too early to start, because um, there's always something to take away from it regardless. Yes, that's perfect. And the other first time home buyer incentive was the land transfer tax. That's uh, huge. Rebate. I love that yeah. one. Yeah. So yeah, once you um, go to your closing appointment, the lawyer, if you're a first time home buyer, of course, um, would uh, apply that land transfer tax rebate up to four thousand dollars on the land transfer. And that's a really good point, especially for real first time home buyers that sometimes don't even know that when you purchase a home. In Ottawa, you have to pay a land transfer tax as the buyer. But if it's your first home, the government will give you up to $4,000 of that amount. And it's different, uh, the land transfer tax is different, I, I find, from city to city. For example, I, I believe in uh, Toronto, it's a lot higher. Correct, yeah. It depends on the jurisdiction that you're purchasing in. So in Ottawa, if you buy that home, they'll rebate you the 4000 But one thing that I always have to remind my first-time home buyers they say, wait, so I have to pay that money and then I get it back? But no, it actually happens uh, the day of the purchase. At closing, it's the lawyer who will apply the rebate for you. So when you get your bill from your lawyer, your statement of adjustments, which I talked about with uh, Sarah Adada on one of our last videos, when you get that sort of receipt from your lawyer, it shows that that amount was needed and then it's like a minus on that. So you are never paying that uh, to anybody and then getting it back it just gets kind of it just disappears for you as a first time home buyer so that's a really really key incentive to make sure that you're taking advantage of um, and then the third one the third one is the year following your the when you're filing your taxes yeah. after you've purchased your first home you can uh, apply for an income tax rebate on your taxes so oh. you know in my newsletter I, I just sent out uh, yesterday to my buyers I you know reminded them that when they are doing their taxes to make sure that the, they've told their accountant that they did purchase the home so they can reclaim that rebate. That's fantastic. So these are just some of the questions that we get from buyers and even sellers alike. Vanessa, thank you so much for answering these for us today. And of course, there's details. Every application is unique. Every buyer's story is unique, whether you're self-employed or full-time employed whether you get a bonus and you're employed full-time, all these things matter. And when you work with professionals that are experienced and really do put their heart into what they do, your best interests are at the top of the list and they go through every single detail to make sure that when we go out and we shop for your home, there's no surprises because we don't want surprises. We want a smooth, smooth experience. To learn more about some of the things that we talked about today and to get in touch with Vanessa and I, you can visit zaidayokova.com. The link is down below and we'll have Vanessa's information here for you as well. And we really look forward to meeting you and uh, helping you find your next home. Absolutely. I look forward to being part of your journey. Yes. Thank you so much, Vanessa. You're the best. Have a good day.